Good morning. Good morning. Man, I hope it's been a good day thus far. We got food in the fellowship hall, right? Praise the Lord. So I just figured this morning on everybody staying here and eating. So I can go as long as I want to go. You can be at the food in five minutes. Okay? Everybody in agreement? Okay, good deal. Because I got papers today. That means we're going to be here a while. Zephaniah. Turn to your Bibles in Zephaniah. It's in the Old Testament. We're going to go through a, diff, uh, a few different things in the Bible this morning. Um, we're either going to go back in the New, and then we'll end up back in the Old. But you know, this is my exciting time of year. Summertime. I like, I like the cold. I like wintertime. I like the fall because that's hunting season. See, Matthew knows. But summertime is exciting for me. You know why? Because that's the Baptist scheduled season for revival. And then Wednesday night at conference, we voted for a revival speaker. Amen? Folks, I get excited. You know, I'm telling you, when I hear the word revival, my heart skips a beat like looking at my wife. You know? I mean, it's just, it's there. My heart skips a beat. I get excited about it. One thing that, that just goes on is the very first revival I ever preached was right here in this church house. Right here. That was the first revival I ever preached. Scared to death. And it was awesome. And I don't know. If y'all enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. Okay? But we voted for revival coming up in August. Right? August is still how far away? We got two months, right? We're thinking, man, but listen, revival needs to start today. If we don't have it yet, we need to go on and get it. And then when Brother Charlie Thornton shows up in August, he's just going to add fuel to the fire. Amen? And that's what we're going to start looking at because I'm excited about it. Man, I could hardly hold myself in this week studying. It was that good. And plus, my wife and kids was coming on. So I got even more excited. Because I told you last Sunday how hard it was to study when it's quiet. My boys got there Thursday night. By the time we got from the airport to home, they was fighting. And I got some studying done. So, buckle down and get excited with me. Amen? Because hopefully revival's coming. Zephaniah, starting in chapter 2, it says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass. As the chafe before the fierce anger of, of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Verse 3 says, Seek ye the Lord, O ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, for a year of being here at Bay Lake, Lord. Thank you so much for just the opportunity to be a part of your work, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every one here today, Lord, that that they be here with open hearts, Lord, that we be here ready, open-minded, open hearts to receive your word, Lord, not to just leave it here on the pew or in these walls, but to carry it in our hearts outside these doors, Lord, where we can carry it out into the world that definitely needs to hear your word. Lord, I thank you for the opportunities that you've not yet laid before us, Lord, for the people that you've not yet put before us, Lord, that we have the opportunity to witness for you. Lord, I also thank you for the young ones that are coming this week. Lord, I thank you for the teachers that have already stood to, to teach this week, Lord. Lord, we all know that if revival is needed, Lord, it's needed now. It's needed in a world that's full of sin. It's needed in a world that's full of unsaved, Lord. But, Lord, we know that revival is also given to us that need reviving. Lord, that's not the world. That's us as Christians. And I pray, Lord, that you just lift us up. 
that you revive us in all that we need, Lord. And I pray that you help us seek your face this morning. Lord, thank you so much for your son who died on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you read Zephaniah in the Old Testament, Zephaniah was, I believe, a book of um, a book of hope. If you start reading in the Old Testament, the Israelites made choices. And the Israelites told God, look, we, God, we want a king. We want kings that's going to that's gonna serve us, that's going to do things for us. That This is what we want. And you know what? Eventually the Lord said, you know what? Fine, you can have it. And that's what happened. And if you'll read through the Old Testament, there's about probably, mm, I'm not a scholar, about 400 years or so that nothing transpired. That prophets would prophesy and Israel would not listen. Things were happening, but they wanted their way or no way. And guess what? They kept going downhill. You know, the great news to that is, though, is we have a loving God. And we have a merciful God. And a God that said, you know what? I still love you. And I'm still going to bring you back. And I'm still going to take care of you. Even though you're doing what you want to do, I'm still going to hold, hold back just a little bit and love on you a lot more. Amen? Does that sound familiar? Because I think I fall in that category a lot. You know, I can read sometimes about the Israelites and I think, man, how, how can you do that? Man, how, what, what kind of person would be that way? And then the Lord shows me a mirror, amen? And I see a mirror and I say, oh, oh, Ben Britton's that way. Well, here in Zephaniah, it says, uh, gather yourself together, you that's right in your land. Then he, he was giving them a message. And he says, gather yourself together, yea, gather together. O nations, I will send you. Before the decree bring forth, before the very past, that the sound be forth, the spirit's anger from the Lord, from the throne, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, who shall sit together, bring the sons of Adam, and help the sons of Adam. Now, let's, let's check this note. He said, gather up, get together, and bring yourselves together. And he said, in verse 3, speak ye the Lord in the nation.
gather up, you get together, and you seek ye the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought this judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be, ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Let me tell you folks, the thing that's going to keep us out of the Lord's anger is seeking his face. In Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, it says this, verse 6, Isaiah 55, verse 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Verse 7 said, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. Verse 8 said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Why? Because his ways is so much greater than ours. Right. Folks, you and I, even though we are saved by grace, we are still absolute sinners. Being saved is a great joy. Amen, folks. I saw a guy on the road this week that he drives out on the cross with Jesus. And he gives Jesus ample He said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. Folks, how, how did, you, did you hear that voice? Seek ye the Lord while he can be found, and, and call ye upon him while he is near. Why? Because we don't want him to get further off. You hear me? You think your life's bad now, you start stepping out on God. You start getting further away from him, and you say, well, brother, listen, I go to church every Sunday and every week. Good. Not having me in today. Will I go to the Bible when we have it? Oh, yeah, that's good, too. But if we don't get in the Word of God at our home, folks, we're not doing any good. If we leave it all in this church house, it's not doing any good. It says, seek ye the Lord.
to Jesus Christ. And the only way we're going to do that is if we seek ye the Lord. He said, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Folks, that means we can get away from God. But guess what? Our God will bring us back. And he'll love on us when we get there. Ain't that great? Listen, there is nothing like seeing a parent smile at you, is it? When I come home, I've been, you know, I've been in that situation all my life. Right down the road from my parents. And when my parents show up in the room, I pull up down the house. They probably smile at me more than they ever have in their life. Ain't that good? But you can see the same thing when you come home. Right? Listen, you may be on the wrong path somewhere. You may be going down the wrong trail somewhere. You may go to a horse track. In Jeremiah 29, I'll get there, maybe, Jeremiah 29 and verses, verses 10 um, through 14, it says this, for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good world toward you. Good word, I'm sorry, toward you. In causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. But listen. Listen real close to verse 13. It says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with what? All your heart. Not a piece of it. You see, folks, that's where you and I fail today. Because we're still selfish.
people, or Jeremiah, sorry, he said, for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years, why was this? Because Jeremiah was writing letters to the people that was exiled out. He was writing letters to the people that was taken out. All these Israelites that was still against, that was doing what they wanted to do. And the kings was coming in and they were sending people elsewhere. And they were sending people out here and out there and over there. And he said, listen to me. He said, the Lord said, 70 years be accomplished at Babylon. I will visit you. I will bring everybody back to this spot. Why? Because God is a forgiven God and he still loves us. Folks, he still loves us. No matter what we've done in our life, unsaved or saved, God still loves us. Ain't it good? Listen to me. The Bible's right there. All you got to do is go. Oh, man, God is good. He is good to us. He said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Why? Because you called my name. That's what God said. In my Bible it says, Ask and you shall receive. Why? Because you're going to him with what? All your heart. Not part of it, but all of it. He said, listen, then shall ye call upon me. Ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Folks, if you don't have Jesus in your life right now, you need to look in the mirror. Because it may mean you're not there with your whole heart. He said, give it all to me. You seek me with your whole heart, and let me show you your life will change. And folks, it's true. If there's something going on in your life right now, give it to God. But give it to him with your whole heart. Don't let pride stand in your way. Get out on those knees and say, Lord, listen, I need your help with this. And folks, he can handle it way better than you and I can. First Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 16, verses 10 and 11. 1 Chronicles 16, 10 and 11 says this, Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Oh, man. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Why does it rejoice? Because, folks, you got the Lord. Listen, the Lord is the joy of our salvation. David wrote it in Psalms. Lord, restore to me uh, the joy of my salvation. Why? Because he had got off in sin, and he needed that sal- the joy of his salvation back. Not salvation. He never lost it. It was always there, but he stepped away from God. He said, God, I need it back. He said, please restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Listen to me, folks. If you're saved today and you don't have joy in your lives, get self out of the way and let God give it back to you. He said, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Why continually? Because you and I face a world every day. Every day. Folks, it's good to step up in a church house. I pray for the Lord that I'm telling you now. So, man, hey, listen. Listen to me. Monday and Tuesday, and me standing here today, it's tough. But you get here on Wednesday, around God's people, and you can build yourself back up. You go Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and man, it's back in the world again, all day long. You get out there Sunday, and man, can you build yourself back up? Why? Because it ain't you doing it, it's God doing it. And you're around godly and 
said, he said, seek his face continually. Matthew 6 and 33. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And you say, well, brother, what is all these things? Well, I'll tell you what. When you get out of church service today, you go home and you start in chapter 5 and you read in verse chapter 6, verse 6. Okay? You go and understand what all these things mean. When the Lord said, what? He said, you seek the kingdom first. He put God first. All of these things will be added in. Man, how great is that? And so we got our nice book with all our little hints. Then you go and read it. we can do and then when we get to the very bottom of it we go and say Lord I need your help and as soon as we let him give us just a little bit we back up trusting ourselves again right what's it going to take to keep us down what, what, what's it going to take to put us where we can depend on the Lord 100% all of the time is it going to take us 400 years Is it going to take too long? Is it going to take walking up to heaven gate and saying, Lord, I just can't do it right now. And he's going to say what? I was there all the time. I just needed you to be there. Seek ye the kingdom of God. I'm going to end with this. One of my favorite verses. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. There's a lot of key words in that verse. And I think that, that verse is one of the best verses for revival. Because you know what we say in revival, you know, say it like this. Can't revive something that was never lived. Now, folks, it was history that you revived. What we got to do is just keep revising. Christian music is a byproduct of folks that get on the street.